let's start uh, my session. So, my name is Mitsuhiro Tanino. I'm a software engineer at the Hitachi Bantara. So, in this session, I'd like to introduce the new storage feature, low block, uh, block volume support. Uh, this uh, provides a feature to use low block volume in, uh, inside the container uh, instead of the file system volume. So this is the agenda. So let me explain, uh, let me introduce myself quickly. And also I will explain about the background, why we are contributing to the, this future. And also I will explain the summary of the low block volume support. What is a uh, low block volume support? Then I will uh, show the detailed usage of uh, low block volumes. Then also I will explain the implementation of deep type about the low block volume. And then I last, uh, I'll explain the, about the future work for the low block volume. So the, this slide uh, is available for the Quebecon schedule site, so please feel free to download it and use it. So let me exp uh, introduce myself quickly. So I'm Mr. Hiro Tanino, uh, software engineer at Hitachi Bantera. Uh, previously, Hitachi Data Systems. So I was in the Linux support service team for almost eight years, and I was provided the uh, Linux support service to enterprise customers, especially related to the CPU or timer or memory region. And after that, I started to contribute to the OpenStack Shinda project uh, almost three years. I've done many bug fixes and uh, added some features into the Shinda. And then, from this year, I started to contribute to the Kubernetes six storage, and I'm now trying to enhance reliability and stability for iSCSI and FC drivers, and also I'm uh, contributing the block volume support feature. So I'm usually in the Kubernetes uh, six storage Slack channel, so if you have uh, any question related to the FC, iSCSI, or block volumes, please ping me. Uh, via the Slack channel. So next, uh, let me explain about the background of this feature. So as you, uh, as you may know, so by using the Kubernetes storage uh, feature, user can create and delete volume with their port. And uh, when port uh, with volume is created, storage plugin uh, creates a volume and creates a file system on top of it. So therefore, currently, the, this volume must be consumed by file system inside the port. So this figure shows the DB application port. So as you can see, the, this application port can access uh, mount pass, which is the uh, slab value data as a persistent volume. So this means the uh, user can't consume a low block volume, such as a slab dev SDA or something like that. Uh, directly from their applications without a file system. It's a current status. So we think the benefit to support the low block volumes, uh, this enables the users to choose appropriate uh, type of volume for their applications, such as uh, MariaDB or HireDB. Uh, this is Hitachi's uh, DBM software, and et cetera. Also, the, this feature enables, uh, provides a consistent I.O. performance and low latency compared to file system volume, especially uh, using uh, enterprise fiber channel storage or iSCSI storage and local SSD disks, uh, suitable uh, low, block use, uh, low block use case. Also, we think the, at the production system, uh, this low block feature is essentially essential functionality and also, in addition, uh, at the V1.9 of the Kubernetes, uh, container storage interface uh, called CSI spec, uh, defined to support both file, uh, file volume and block volume uh, capabilities. And the CSI plugins uh, merged at, uh, as alpha at the V1.9. So let me explain more uh, detail of the current problem. So this figure shows the uh, current workflow of, uh, to create a port with file system persistent volume. So as you can see, as a step one, user requests a port with persistent volume claim. Then, as a step two, uh, PV binder binds uh, requested persistent volume claim. 
and put a provision on the power system in the volume. And at step three, uh, storage plugin attaches uh, PV to Kubernetes uh, node. Then that PV is recognized as a thread of SDA on Kubernetes node. In this case, uh, also plugin creates a file system on top of the thread of SDA if a file system node exists. Then the volume of thread of SDA uh, is mounted to the root FS on Kubernetes node. After that, as I said before, Kubernetes starts an application port. Then during the port creation, the mount, pass, uh, mount, point, uh, thread based, uh, mount point is passed into a container's mount pass. In this case, uh, the mount pass is thread uh, server data. So inside, uh, from inside the port, so application, uh, DB application port can access mount pass to of the variable data to store the DB application data. So as you, uh, as you may notice, so foreign components such as uh, persistent volume, persistent volume claim, and the uh, Kube API server, Kube controller manager, Kubelet, also storage plugin, uh, can't handle uh, block, volume, uh, block type of volume currently. They so only support file system uh, type at the Kubernetes version 1.8. Also, there is a workaround today, so using the privileged option. So when user creates a pod with a privileged option, all block devices on Kubernetes nodes are exposed to a container. So by using this option, user, user application can use any block devices on the Kubernetes node. However, in order to use this privileged option, uh, admin have to uh, configure the arrow privileged equal Oops. Uh, admin, uh, admin have to uh, configure the uh, arrow privileged, privileged to uh, equal to the option for Kubernetes uh, cluster. So we think so that this is uh, this isn't a recommended way since the uh, privileged container uh, may cause just security problems. So from the container, so user application can anything to do the Kubernetes node. So maybe the Kubernetes node may be destroyed. So it's a very uh, dangerous option. So it's not recommended to use. So since there is a problem, so we. In order to solve this problem, we contribute to as the new future low block volume. So let me explain about the low block volume support at the, uh, version 1.9. So we introduced a new feature, low block volume support at V1.9 as the alpha feature. So this feature has a new API, two new API supports. First one is the volume mode. Uh, volume mode uh, API uh, is supported at the persistent volume and also persistent volume claim object. And second one is the volume devices API. Uh, this API is uh, for the port definition. So I'll explain about the more detail of these uh, parameters so, uh, parameter later. Also, uh, as for the plugin uh, part, we introduced the fiber channel plugin supports for low block volume as a reference driver. So please note the uh, internal uh, fiber channel plugin only supports the pre-provisioned uh, pre persistent volume only. Also, as for the dynamic uh, provisioning support case, uh, spec is uh, still under discussion. So this is not uh, concluded as a version 1.9. So but we confirmed our XG uh, fiber channel external provisioner, this is not OSS, uh, but uh, this works uh, together with updated uh, internal FC plugin. So maybe we can close, the, we, maybe we can fix, uh, we can add the spec towards uh, version 1.10, our the dynamic provisioning support. So this way here shows the new workflow, uh, new workflow using the block persistent volume. So there are four steps. Uh, there are four steps. Uh, at first step, user requests a port with volume devices uh, parameter, and also uh, PVC with volume mode equal block. 
And uh, at step three, PV binder binds the uh, requested PVC and the pre-provisioned uh, persistent volume, which has a volume mode equal block. So the important things here is uh, both PVC's volume mode and the PV's volume mode should have the same value to bind, uh, to bind, uh, to bound, to be bound. And uh, under step three, uh, storage plugin attaches uh, persistent volume to QWERT node. And then persistent volume is recognized as Sladev SDA or something like that on the QWERT node. Since the vol uh, volume mode equal block in this case, uh, plugin does not create file system on top of the Sladev SDA. So after that, uh, container can consume the device uh, as a low, low block device. So at step four, uh, Kubernetes start, uh, starts an application port. Then during port creation, uh, block PV is passed to the port as thread SDA. Or any user defined device path. Uh, the device path option uh, can be used, uh, can be defined by the pass, uh, pass, uh, port definition. Uh, I'll explain after, later. So as you can see in the uh, figure, so DB application port uh, can see device pass through the SDA. So the DB application can issue I/O to the SDA directly in this case. So let me explain about the usage of the low block volumes feature. So as I explained, this feature is an uh, alpha feature at V1.9. So in order to use uh, this feature, admin needs to configure hyphen hyphen feature gates uh, equal block volume equal to for uh, services uh, such as Kubernetes, Kube API server, Kube controller manager, etc., to enable uh, block volume feature. And without using uh, feature gate configuration, uh, volume mode parameter and volume devices parameter, uh, API parameter are not accepted from the persistent volume claim or persistent volume definition. So let me show the more detail of the pot, uh, persistent volume definition. So. This figure shows the persistent volume definition with uh, volume mode equal block. So as you can see, uh, admin uh, can define volume mode in the persistent volume definition. So the volume mode API field supports two volume modes. First one is a file system, and the other one is a block. So admin can define uh, the expected usage of the volume through this volume mode parameter. And if volume mode is not specified, uh, the PV is treated uh, as a file system volume. This is the same, uh, same behavior uh, to current existing. So next one is the persistent volume claim definition. Uh, persistent volume claim definition is defined by user. So in this case, also persistent volume claim uh, supports the persistent volume mode, uh, volume mode parameter. In this case, volume mode is set as block. So also this volume mode uh, supports the two volume modes. First one is a file system R, and the other is a block. So persistent volume, uh, using the persistent volume claim, uh, user can define expected volume mode uh, through the PVC volume mode. And also if uh, volume mode is not specified, uh, PVC requests a volume uh, with volume mode called file system uh, this keeps uh, compatibility to current, uh, for the current existing behavior. And third one is the port definition. So as for the port definition, uh, we added a new API field, volume devices. So volume devices uh, have uh, support uh, two parameters. First one is the name, and the second one is the device path. As for the name parameter, uh, this is equal to uh, volume name. And as for the device pass, uh, this device pass is, uh, is used, this device pass is uh, actual device pass inside the container. So in this case, so the device pass is uh, defined as a slide XVDA. So 
in the container, uh, user application can consume the low block device uh, by using a SLADEV uh, XPDA directory. Also, in the pod definition, uh, user can define, uh, user can use a read only parameter. And if this, uh, this parameter is used uh, and set uh, as a true, the volume is passed as a read only block volume. So, user application cannot write to the block volume, only read from the existing data from the block volume. And also, uh, there are some combination uh, config, uh, limitation is there. So as for the volume devices, uh, this parameter only supports the volume mode uh, should be blo uh, equal block. And also, when using the volume mounts, uh, volume mode should be file system. So any, uh, if user defines the other cases, port uh, never finish to create. So next, I showed the volume mode binding rule for the pre-provisioned uh, pre persistent volume disk. So in order to support uh, low block volume, we added a new binding rule into the persistent volume controller. So there are three conditions uh, of the volume modes. So first one is uh, unspecified, and second one is file system, and the third one is block. So if user isn't specified the volume mode, uh, that uh, volume mode is uh, considered as a file system to com uh, keep compatibility with existing behavior. And if a user requests a uh, low block volume through the persistent volume claim mode field, then it can only bind to PV, which has the same volume mode. So this means uh, in order to bind the PVC and PV, uh, volume mode should be have same value, should have same value. So this slide shows a quick glance of the block volume, uh, persistent volume, and uh, persistent volume claim. So we also added a, uh, added fi a fix to QBA control uh, command. So when user use uh, QBA control describe, describe command to the persistent volume, or persistent volume claim, uh, in the command result, uh, volume mode uh, parameter is shown. So you can see, uh, you can confirm uh, volume mode using the QB uh, control describe command. So please note the this volume mode is shown only if the future gate is enabled. Otherwise, the, uh, this uh, field isn't shown in this command line result. So next, uh, this one is uh, describing to the detail, uh, describe to the port definition. So in, in this case, uh, new field uh, devices is shown under the mount uh, point. So using uh, QB control describe for port, uh, user can see the devices uh, tag and uh, also device pass. In this case, uh, device pass is a SLADEV XVDA, and also containers, uh, containers volume name is shown. And the uh, volume name is uh, connected to the persistent volume claim. Uh, so as you can see, the uh, volume data is uh, connected to the persistent volume claim uh, block PVC001. Um, this one shows the uh, inside the container uh, or a port. So when the port is running, the user can confirm uh, if the actually block device is attached to the inside the container. So this result shows the ls la sladev And as you can see, so sladev xpda is shown under the sladev, uh, sladev directory. Also, since the, this uh, block volume is writable, user can consume DD, uh, user can issue IO using DD to the low block, uh, low block device directory like, uh, like this. Okay, so next I'd like to explain the implementation deep dive. 
So in this uh, chapter, I will explain about the three topics. First one is the uh, Kubernetes volume plugin interface. Uh, this, is, uh, this is for the plugin developer. So when implementing to the storage plugin, uh, storage plugin must have some interface. So I will explain, I will explain about that. Also, second one is the directories and the Kubernetes node. So when uh, port with uh, volume is uh, started on the Kubernetes node, uh, there are two directories will be created on, on the Kubernetes node. First one is the port volume directory, and second one is the plugin directory. I'll explain about the detail of these directories for usages. And third one is uh, avoiding a silent volume replace, uh, replacement. Uh, this one is uh, during development of this feature, we noticed uh, this problem is happened. So I will explain detail later. So let me explain about the Kubernetes volume plugin interface. So in order to implement the storage plugin for Kubernetes storage, so at least uh, plugin have to have a mounter and a mounter interface. So this interface is used for the function to mount and amount volume to the Kubernetes node and also into the container. And also plugin uh, can have op optionally uh, attacher and detacher interface. This interface, uh, if plugin need, uh, are needed, uh, if plugin has a cloud provider uh, attacher functionality. Also provisioner uh, and the deleter uh, are needed if plugin uh, provides a dynamic provisioning uh, functionality. And also recycle, as for the recycler, uh, this is needed if plugin provides the volume uh, scrubbing feature and recycling features. And following two interface, uh, new interfaces, first one is the block volume mapper interface and the block volume map, uh, second one is the block volume mapper interface. Uh, these interfaces are introduced uh, for block volume, low block volume support. So let me explain about the current mounter and unmounter interface uh, quickly. So this is for the file system volume usage. So this, uh, this, uh, this interface uh, used to make data source such as a block, uh, volume, block devices, uh, network share, et cetera, available as a directory on Kubernetes node, uh, Kubernetes node's root file system directory. And then volume is mounted into a container by Kubernetes Container's runtime interface. Uh, so these, uh, there are several methods uh, are implemented. So these methods are always called on the Kubernetes node by Kubernetes binary. So mounter and the unmounter interface requires uh, some methods such as a setup art or a teardown art, et cetera. And as for the setup art functionality, uh, this method uh, pro, uh, execute uh, attach and mount volume to the Kubernetes node. And also teardown art, uh, this method uh, execute amount and detach volume for the Kubernetes node. So next one is uh, block volume mapper and uh, mapper interface. This is new and for the low block volume. So this uh, interface is uh, make a data source such as a volume or a block device available uh, as a block device on Kubernetes node. Then the block device is passed into a container by container runtime interface on the Kubernetes node. Then uh, and there are these, these methods always called also from a Kubernetes node on the Kubernetes binary. So the block, mapper, uh, block volume mapper and a mapper uh, interface requires only two methods uh, shown here. So first one is a setup device, and second one is a teardown device. So as for the purpose of the setup device, uh, this method do uh, execute uh, attach volume to Kubernetes node. And second one, teardown device, this uh, method execute a detach volume from Kubernetes node. So the, as you can see, uh, there is a node. So if your plugin uh, has an attacher or a attacher and detacher interface, uh, these methods could be no operations. 
uh, because the attach and detach operation are done by persistent volume controller. So attach and detach uh, functionality are not required inside the setup device or a tear down device. Okay, so let me explain about the directories under the Kubernetes node. So as for the load of the directories under the Kubernetes node, uh, first one, pod volume directory, and this directory is used to mount a formatted volume uh, per pod. Then this directory is mounted into the container. So inside the container application, uh, can access this mounted uh, mount point to store the, their data. And second is the plugin directory. Uh, this directory is used to store plugin specific data, uh, specific configurations, and then uh, also this uh, this, uh, uh, this volume, uh, formatted volume is mounted to this directory. So for example, uh, iSCSI plugin and RBD plugin store their connection information to this uh, plugin directory. So using this information, class admin can find the feature block device is used on feature application, uh, application port for their troubleshooting uh, purpose. So however, uh, about the block volume case, the volume is not uh, formatted, so therefore they can't be mounted to the directories. So instead of uh, mounting, uh, we uh, Kubernetes, uh, at, all, at the block volume case, Kubernetes stores the symbolic link which is associated to, to the block device, such as relative CDX, to these directories. So as a result, uh, admin can find the physical uh, block device corresponding to the persistent volume and persistent volume claim by checking the symbolic uh, destination of the symbolic link. So let me uh, explain more detail of the, these directories. So let me here show the mounter and unmounter case. So mounter and unmounter case, so each pod has its own uh, pod volume directory and the uh, barely uh, Kubernetes pod, pod UUID, uh, Kubernetes IO, uh, fiber channel uh, folder. And the volume is formatted and mounted under volume name DIA, such as uh, barely uh, Kubernetes pod, pod UUID, Kubernetes IO, FC, slash uh, persistent volume name directory. So if a pod has multiple volumes, multiple volume directories are created under pod volume directory. So admin can find physical block device by checking these mount points. And also block volume mapper and a mapper case, uh, each pod has own pod volume directory and that's a body Kubernetes uh, pods, pod UID, volume devices, Kubernetes IO, uh, Chida FC. So the di uh, difference between mount uh, uh, file system volume and block volume system. So we added the volume devices directory and that's the pod UID directory. Also symbolic link associated to the block device uh, such as the SDX is stored under the pod volume directory. This is related to uh, this symbolic link uh, associated to the Slavdev SDA or SD, uh, like SDX. And also uh, if a pod has multiple volumes, uh, multiple symbolic links, uh, with volume name are uh, stored under that directory. So in this case, also admin can find physical block device by checking the symbolic link too. Okay. Is the destination of that symbolic link the actual block device on the host system? Yes. So the, in this case, so the PV name symbolic link associated to the thread of SDP, it's on the uh, actual de block device on the Qubit node. So admin can find the port disk and the physical disk on the Qubit node for the troubleshooting. So next one is the plugin directory on Qubit node uh, using the FC, uh, FC plugin. So as for the mounter case, so each volume has own uh, plugin directory under the value of Qubit, plugins, Qubit IO, FC, uh, worldwide name hyphen LUN, uh, LUN number in this case. And the volume is formatted and mounted under the plugin directory. It's the same. So in this case, even if uh, multiple ports use the uh, same volume, only one plugin directory uh, per volume is created. 
and also some uh, storage configuration is stored under the, this directory. And as for the block volume uh, mapper and a mapper case, uh, each volume has own plugin directory uh, under value Kubernetes plugins, uh, Kubernetes IO, FC, uh, slash volume devices, uh, worldwide name hyphen LU hyphen zero. So in this case, also we added the uh, volume devices directory under the FC directory. And also symbolic links uh, associated to block device, such as RadWSDX, are uh, stored under the plugin directory. So if multiple uh, ports use the same volume, in this case, uh, multiple symbolic links uh, with, which has a port in, uh, UUID name are uh, stored under the directory. So at last, I'd like to explain about the about silent volume replacement problem. So during the development of this feature, we found a problem that the container runtime does not take a lock to attach the block device, even if a container is online. So as a result, uh, volume is replaced silently to another volume, even if application is uh, issuing IO to the block volume inside the container. So this is a big problem for, uh, for the user perspective. So to avoid this problem, uh, we added a logic to open a device, uh, device file of uh, block volume such as the SLADEV SDX uh, using a loopback device file. So by using a loopback device, uh, this takes a lock using the file descriptor, then the user can avoid device silent uh, replace pro uh, replacement problem. So if you are the admin, a cluster admin, you may notice that there are many loopback device on Kubernetes node if user uses a low block device, a low, low block volume on the Kubernetes node. Uh, no, actually we solved under the development, so we found this problem and we solved before uh, merging the this feature, so there are no is uh, issue reported. Okay, so at last, uh, let me explain about the future work. So as I explained, so dynamic uh, spec of the dynamic provisioning is not uh, completed. So towards the version v, uh, 1.10, we will uh, discuss about the spec for the dynamic provisioning and the finalize that spec. Also, in order to moving from the alpha feature to beta feature, we need to add more easy test cases or unit test cases to, uh, to the low block volume. And also, since currently only one fiber channel plugin is supported, we need uh, to expand the more volume plugin support. So we are targeting the local volumes, GCPD, AWEBS, ISCG, and RBD cluster uh, for version 1.10. We are welcome to the contribution. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Suggestion. Sorry, yes. <laughs> yes, please. That instead of doing a carry on notice, you just do CSI mm -hmm. first. And then <laughs> those follows. Any engineer from the CSI spec team to low block volume support team? <laughs> So she's asking, uh, he's asking, so he wants to support a CS5 plugin at first at the V1.10, right? I, I agree, if all things are easier for yeah. this yeah. 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 Okay, so let me, let me discuss at the storage meeting about that. Okay. Uh, question. Yes. Do you need any privilege inside the container to use? No, no privilege are required. <laughs> So let me wrap up the, this session. So we introduced the new low block volume feature to version 1.9 as alpha feature. So as I mentioned, this, uh, in using this feature, uh, user can use a low block volume inside the container without any privileged option. 
Also, we added a new AP5 field, uh, first one in the volume mode, and second one in the volume devices. Also, currently, only fiber channel plugin supports uh, low block volume. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. <laughs>